Hey everyone, Face here with uh, the third in my series of uh, uh, tutorials for uh, electronics for models. Uh, I do want to apologize for being uh, late with getting this one uh, put together. I wanted to have it done by the weekend, but um, mitigating circumstances pretty much have, uh, have prevented me from being able to do so. Um, in fact, I even went so far as I, I shot this entire segment all last night, and then somehow all my footage got deleted. So here I am. I have to I have to do it all over again. Um, so anyway, so I, what I want to do here is um, demonstrate how to put together a uh, a fairly basic uh, parallel circuit using uh, three different types of LEDs running off of a nine volt battery. Uh, so you can see here all the uh, all the equipment basically that we're going to need, all the tools and whatnot that we're going to need to uh, to put together a parallel circuit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the same uh, circuit as I did in the last video, this, uh, the simple um, series circuit that I I did in that, um, rather than uh, than doing three completely new ones from scratch because this will uh, this will work just fine. I'm also going to install a uh, a button here. Uh, I want to show how um, how the current flows from one one circuit to another when uh, power is interrupted uh, to a uh, to one of the of the of the three uh, circuits running parallel. Uh, I've also I've gone ahead and soldered a couple of terminals to uh, my battery snap here. This is the same battery snap I used in the last. Uh, the last video, but instead of using gator clips, I've gone ahead and soldered on. These are actually uh, the clipped off stubs, I like to call them, from uh, from an LED I used in uh, my NSEA protector model. Uh, I've just gone ahead and soldered them directly to the wire on the end here. Uh, I like to call these, um, essentially it's a hub that the uh, all the wires will split off from to create the uh, the multiple circuits and I will I will show off how that works uh, in a moment um, I've got uh, two different types of LEDs here uh, I've got uh, uh, three I'm going to use three green uh, 3500 milli candelas and three white rated at 6000 milli candelas uh, in addition I've got my uh, my trusty wire wrapping tool a pair of clippers an assortment of wire, um, two uh, uh, two resistors rated at 560 ohms. Um, the resistor on on this circuit here is uh, rated at 510. I would have used the same type on all three, except that the the store ran out um, of uh, of fi uh, 510 ohm resistors, so I had to uh, I had to use the next closest that they had. Uh, and I have a, a 9 volt battery here. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put this together and uh, we'll come back in just a second. So uh, you can see here I've gone ahead and uh, uh, wired up two additional circuits very much the same as the first one um, that I did uh, for my last video you can see right here. Um, the second one in the middle here has this uh, the button that I referred to before. I will demonstrate why uh, why I put that in in a moment. Um, I've wired them both up to uh, as I referred to before the hub essentially um, uh, on the positive and negative terminals coming off of the battery. Uh, what this has the effect of doing is it splits the electric current um, into in this case three or up to you know five ten twenty individual circuits um, so that uh, each uh, each string of LEDs will be illuminated with the same intensity as they would be if they were on their own independent circuit but it comes at the cost of uh, longevity the battery life uh, a nine volt battery like this will illuminate eight LEDs such as these for continuously it might last for um, a, a few hours you know eight to ten hours 
Uh, but if you had um, three of these, each powering uh, their own individual uh, two or three LEDs, it would last for dozens of hours. Anyway, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll, uh, I'll hook it up and see, you can see there, uh, now they're all, uh, all illuminated. And as I push the button, the green LEDs go out, but the brightness of the red and white LEDs isn't diminished at all. So the current to them remains stable, uh, it remains exactly the same regardless of whether the green LEDs are illuminated or not. So like I said, as far as I know, and as I've said numerous times, I'm not an expert, but this is my own interpretation, my own understanding of how it works is that, like I said, it comes at the expense of battery life. The more LEDs you have running, the faster your battery will drain, but the more circuits you have, um, the, the, the individual LEDs, the brightness will not be affected. So that's really all there is to it. I could continue to expand this outwards, uh, add dozens more LEDs, um, you know, as far as the eye can see. I mean, I've got several packages more, uh, more LEDs. I could wire them up, but, you know, then we'd be here all day and the, and the point would really be uh, the same. Uh, but um, I really just wanted to give you a basic overview of how a parallel circuit is put together and what basically what the purpose of it serves. Um, so uh, I hope that uh, I hope that you've been able to uh, to uh, take something from this. So the first time that uh, I decided I wanted to put lights into a model, this was pretty much all I really knew. Uh, was how to uh, how to create you know some very simple electric circuits series and parallel. Um, beyond that, you know I, everything else I, I learned by doing. By basically by uh, I went to an electronic store and I bought a soldering iron and some wire and a few packs of LEDs and some resistors and I just started experimenting. Everything I've learned in the past. I guess it's been about a year and a half, almost two years since I did my first lighting project. Everything I have learned in that two years, I have done, I have learned through experimentation. And that's really the best way to do it, uh, if you ask me. Um, I mean, yeah, you can look, uh, if you, if you want to start doing more complicated lighting effects like uh, flashing lights or, uh, or, you know, say for a Star Trek model you want to do like a photon torpedo flash where the light gets more intense and then a bright vivid flash then that's beyond me that is not the kind of thing I know anything about I don't know how to create a circuit board with a specialty kind of illumination like that you're gonna wanna you know you're gonna wanna look into some serious electronics ma books or magazines to to learn how to do that sort of thing um, I just really wanted to to give everyone watching a very basic groundwork for how to you know how how to get inspired if you're if you're afraid of lighting a model because you think it's complicated or difficult or expensive that's that's really what I wanted to show you how not to be afraid of uh if that makes any sense um, so yeah, like I said, just ex learn by doing, just, you know, go out and buy a few supplies and start experimenting. There is no better way to learn how to do, how to, how to do anything than by just playing with it and experimenting. Um, I do want to continue this, this series. Uh, I haven't really decided where I want to go with it yet. Um, my, I'm not going to be doing any lighting projects for the next little while. Uh, no, nothing, you know, serious. Nothing involving more than, you know, one or two LEDs. Uh, no, certainly nothing on the level of my, my protector or, God forbid, my, uh, my Enterprise A, um, which I don't think I'll ever top. <laughs> um, but um, I, I'm probably going to do uh, the Ion Nebulizer kit from Pegasus Hobbies, uh, which is essentially the, the uh, like a, it's like a phaser. Um, so I'll probably do that in the next week or two. Basically, 
uh, showing how to actually install wiring into a model, how to actually implement these techniques that I tried to show you into a practical model. So um, do please uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to be getting started on my uh, on a few other things. So do please keep your eye on this channel. Subscribe if you like. Um, and uh, to everyone out there, happy modeling.